medication problem. This isn't just an immune imbalance, it's a nervous system dysregulation problem. When your mast cells, these incredible immune cells that are found throughout your body become hypersensitive, your body starts responding to everything as if it is a threat. Your body is responding to everything as if it's a threat. While this can feel like it's just emotional, this is actually a nervous system, an immune cell problem. It's a full body cellular level response. This is a big part of having a biology of trauma. Now, welcome to this mini episode on the biology behind it. This is a short action step highlight uh, episode of the longer biology of trauma episode that was featured this week. It was published on uh, Tuesday earlier this week. And as we look at what this episode was on, it was on how impasse and highly sensitive people are more uh, challenged with things like grief. They're more challenged with things like grief. Why? Because the sensitivity of the nervous system makes these mast cells more sensitive to everything. So episode 131 was on why empaths get stuck in grief and how to navigate it. And as we're looking at what this means, this means that we are needing to support our mast cells differently. Now, I had a great conversation with a fantastic person this last weekend, and she was explaining to me her story around even having multiple autoimmune conditions, the first one being graves at age 22 and her body can still react to stressors and it's not just her heart racing but she will get skin reactions digestive issues panic and she discovered the mast cell piece that i want to explore more in this episode because and i'll just say that her name is miriam to protect her identity Miriam, I want to share one more practical tip that I thought of since our conversation for this sensitivity and calming down the nervous system, the nervous system dysregulation, especially as we look at there being autoimmunity for you and this empathic nature, and especially for those like you who find it overwhelming to navigate grief, loss, and change because of their empathic sensitive nature. As a reminder, in the full episode 131, we went into detail about how empaths get overwhelmed by grief and how they absorb emotions from everyone around them. For those of you who are practitioners, this will be showing up in your work because you can be overwhelmed by the pain, by the trauma, by the stories that people are sharing with you And how do you take care of your system when you have this mast cell activation? But many people don't know the biology behind that sensitivity and grief, the challenges with absorbing other people's energy. So let's look at these mast cells and why they are so reactive and what we can do about it. Understanding mast cells. Mast cells are an immune cell in your body. So mast cells are a type of immune cell in your body, and their job is to protect you from anything that might kill you. So they are actually quite helpful in their job of keeping us alive, and they are throughout our entire body. So as we look at them being in every tissue, your skin, your gut, your lungs, around your blood vessels, these mast cells have 200 types of receptors on them. So they are literally looking at your emotions. They're looking at foods, chemicals, temperature changes. They are absorbing the vibrations around us. And there are vibrations in the lights that we're exposed to, vibrations in the food we eat, and in the relationship connections that we have with other people, that space between us and someone else, the mast cells are absorbing all of that. So here's what happens then. Those mast cells, they detect a threat. Now, sometimes that is a real threat, a bee sting, a pathogen, a virus, a bacteria, a 
a real chemical that you need to respond to. And these mast cells respond by creating inflammation. They are literally going to trigger the alarm and get everybody else on board. And so it's the initial system that allows for the rest of the body to have this response for them to know that there's a problem and that they need to respond. Now, as we look at, as we look at what happens next, when we don't know how to complete those responses, or I'm going to tell you, or when we have an ongoing biology of trauma, that will continue to trigger these mast cells. It will continue to trigger the mast cells so that the mast cells intended to protect us in times of danger. They sense that we are always in danger and they are always on high alert and very easy to react. And so we would use the term, the mast cells in a biology of trauma, mast cells are more sensitive. And this can be why many empaths are more sensitive in many areas, not just in the emotional connection with other people and absorbing their energy, but on a biochemical layer at the cell layer, they are actually more sensitive to what they're being exposed to. So that stressors and Miriam, you and I talked about this stressors are an overactive alarm system. Even something as simple as a conversation with a family member. A family member should not be creating a whole body response the way that it is for those of us who can tend to be empaths or highly sensitive people. So that we are having a conversation and all of a sudden we're noticing that our, not only again, our heart is racing, but our, our gut, our skin is having a reaction as well. So this is due to the mast cells being more sensitive. Mast cells being more sensitive, they are going to be triggered more easily and release this inflammation that communicates to everything. So the mast cells then help trigger adrenaline. Now, here we are then having a mast cell activation, an immune cell being activated, and it's triggering adrenaline. What is that adrenaline going to do? Well, that adrenaline is going to start our sympathetic nervous system. So it starts our sympathetic nervous system and kicks it into high gear. And now we're experiencing the emotional aspect of feeling under attack, the emotional aspect of being a more sensitive person. The adrenaline as you know, if you've, if you've been around me, you know that I talk a lot about adrenaline and how adrenaline is actually the uh, more uh, stress-related hormone that we want to be looking at. We actually want to be looking more at adrenaline than at cortisol. And this is the connection between being a sensitive person. It is constantly activating our sympathetic nervous system. What this means for you is that there's actually a lot of tools that we have for calming down the sympathetic nervous system. And that is what we need to do. If we don't, that sympathetic nervous system is going to lead itself to overwhelm and the body reaching its critical line of overwhelm and saying, this is too much for us and we need to shut down. And that's when we notice ourselves becoming uh, overwhelmed, feeling like we need to isolate, push people away. Some of us will tend to cling on to other people when we go into that overwhelmed place, but this is no longer just stress. This has reached a level where it's too much. It's too much stress and we're falling apart, going into that spiral. So the connection between trauma biology and mast cell activation is profound. And when we look at the body trauma loop that I talk in my book, this is the cycling between stress and shutdown. And our mast cells are constantly feeling under threat the more trauma biology we have. This is a major concept of the biology of trauma is that not only does stored trauma create changes in our biology, but that same biology now perpetuates the nervous system dysregulation.
And that is why Miriam, I told you that it won't just be the nervous system work per se. The biology is now creating that nervous system dysregulation. So we will need to look at what biology can we calm down? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about now action steps because this is where the rubber meets the road and we can actually do some real things, especially for those of you who are listening in and have joined me for uh, the live. Then you're looking at how do I calm things down? And that is the first step when we are wanting to shift the nervous system dysregulation and store trauma in the body. We want to calm things down. So we want to take our nervous system that's all over the place, up and down, and we want to create a stabilization of our nervous system so that it's not getting as high as it normally does and it's not going as low as it normally does. We're wanting to create this window of stabilization that will help us then have the energy and capacity to do the deeper work. What does that look like? We want to work on everything that is creating ongoing dysregulation of the nervous system. This is, I go into detail on this in chapter 14 of my book, the, the stabilization. So let me pull out a few pieces that I can relate to the mast cells specifically. Mast cells are extremely sensitive to blood sugar fluctuations. Did you know that? Mast cells are very sensitive to blood sugar fluctuations. This is why I, again, wear a continuous glucose monitor for me to know when are my sugar levels not just going too high, but going too low, because I want to know that that happened. I want to know what caused them to go too high. I want that to know what caused them to go too low so that I can do something about it. And moving forward, I know not to do that anymore. So sometimes for some of us early on, this may mean eating more frequently than what is ideal. But in the meantime, we may need to eat protein every three to four hours so that my blood sugar levels are more stable. You may need to bring in more healthy fat when you eat in order to keep your blood sugar levels stable. I am noticing that when I have corn, when I have fruit, my sugar levels go above my ideal window. That is going to trigger my mast cells, which is going to trigger my nervous system. So if I don't want nervous system reactions, then I need to keep my blood sugar level stable. And I have gone deep into my study of my nervous system and diet to know what are those things that spike my blood sugar levels. And it has been surprising to see what foods spike them. I'm like, really, this is what takes my blood sugar level high. But then the problem is, is that when the blood sugar level goes high, because of the insulin is released, it's going to drop lower and faster. Second practice is some supplements. So for the antihistamines, uh, vitamin C, Miriam, you are already on vitamin C. The starting dose that I recommend for most people is a thousand milligrams of vitamin C twice daily. This is overall one of the best supplements that you can take for a biology of trauma because it will also help the oxidative stress. Cursetin is one that I have also found helpful for me. So quercetin is targeted to the immune system. And so 500 milligrams twice daily of quercetin can seem to help for stabilizing mast cells from responding to different chemicals or exposures in the air. I want to specifically talk about something that I did not mention, Miriam, because the more that I've thought about our conversation, the more I'm like, I feel that this might be so helpful for you. And again, for many other people who are noticing that they might have a mast cell dysregulation problem as part of their underlying biology behind being an empath or highly sensitive. And this relates to the sympathetic nervous system. So in short, again, what I explained was how the mast cells get triggered. They get triggered by fewer things. It doesn't take as much to trigger them because the mast cells are also more sensitive. So they get triggered. They trigger adrenaline. Adrenaline is our sympathetic nervous system. At this point, the sympathetic nervous system becomes a runaway train. The train has left the station. There's no pulling it back. 
but how do I, how do I slow down that train? How do I take the, the sympathetic nervous system and calm it back down? Because the longer that my sympathetic nervous system continues to pump out adrenaline, the more dysregulation my nervous system is going to experience. So I want to be calming the nervous system dysregulation aspect, the sympathetic system specifically as quickly as possible and as effectively as possible. I talked about sensory rest, Miriam. I don't have time to talk about sensory rest on this episode. I need to wrap up. But one of the aspects that I bring in for that sensory rest is heat. Not just heat anywhere, though, for those of you who do any sauna work, I'm sure that you've experienced the relaxation that can come with heat. But I lay on a heat pad. Now, for me, this is my biomat, so it's also giving me some infrared radiation as well as some red light therapy. But the heat on the back, our sympathetic chain runs up and down our spine, which means that when we provide direct heat on our sympathetic nervous system uh, along the spine, it will calm it down. So that is what I do is when I take my sensory rest, I am laying down on heat, heat that I can immediately feel like it, it just, it just relaxes my sympathetic nervous system. This will be something that I do for about, uh, 30, 20, 20 to 30 minutes uh, during the day, during my sensory rest. And then I may do, do it as well in the evening, depending on how much stress I have had that day. I really, really want to be calming down my sympathetic nervous system and heat directly on the back is how uh, a very powerful tool that I use to do that. Again, what is helpful for me is I just lay on the heat pad. And that way I'm not trying to walk around with heat on my back that seems like it would be cumbersome. What I'm doing is I am taking a nap every day. I'm taking my sensory rest every day and I'm laying on my biomat, which I've turned up the heat quite a bit in order to get that full calming down of my sympathetic nervous system, especially on those days that I notice that for whatever reason, my mast cells are being more reactive and more sensitive. So with that, again, I know that we had talked about many of those pieces, Miriam, but not this last piece around the heat on the back. So I'm hoping that you can try this out, give it a try. I know that you're going to be starting with the 21 day journey, those somatic exercises that will also really promote the shifting of the nervous system into the calm alive state, getting it out of that sympathetic or the overwhelm. This is like, we need to be doing the stabilization the first thing. So in summary, we want to be addressing the biology, the quercetin, the vitamin C, but also the anatomy and knowing that we can just put heat on the back helps us calm down our sympathetic nervous system, decrease the amount of adrenaline that's being made. And just that will be a big help for a nervous system that's stuck in the spiral and the body trauma loop that I talk about. With that, thank you for joining me. I am your host, Dr. Amy, for this episode. And I will see you next time.